Okay, hello everyone. Uh, today we will discuss chapter number four, part three, uh, the last part of chapter number four. So mainly we'll, we will discuss the AAA uh, formal authentication protocols and we will discuss mainly these four protocols today. Uh, Radius protocol, terminal access control, access control plus protocol, Kerberos and OAuth. So we'll discuss their uh, working of these protocols and uh, some traits of those protocols as well. So uh, firstly, starting with the definition of AAA. Uh, AAA stands for authentication, authorization, and accounting. Um, I think we already talked about it in our chapter number one. So what is authentication? Authentication is uh, basically which identifies who you are. Who are you? Who are you? Authorization is what can you do? Then accounting is what did you do? So basically, uh, in the AAA servers, uh, they 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 perform all these operations all together, and uh, these are different protocols uh, which which actually run on AAA protocols. So uh, we we also call them like AAA server, terminal access control server, Kerberos server, and OAuth servers as well. We we do that, but in fact, these are three uh, these are four different authentication protocols. So starting with the Radius, uh, Radius it stands for remote. Authentication, remote authentication, dial-in, user, service. So this is basically called Radius. Uh, that's basically the full form of Radius. Uh, Radius is basically a networking protocol and that provides authentication and also it provides security as well. So mainly if you if you talk about the definition of Radius server, so what is Radius? Radius, it provides it provides the uh, centralized AAA like authentication, authorization and accounting to all connected users. Okay, so there are mainly two components in Radius protocol. So Radius, it involved two main components. I'll explain you Radius with this figure and then I'll list uh, all these steps as well. But there are two main components in Radius. The first component is called Radius Client. Radius Client. And the second component is Radius Server. So Radius Client is basically a networking device. So networking devices Networking devices, for example, uh, switches, routers, hubs, and access points. Access points are basically called radius client. While radius server, it performs users' profiles, profiling, and authentication. It has a user database and perform user authentication. Okay, so that's the Radius client, which provides services to Radius client as well. You can do it that way as well. So let's understand it, how Radius actually work. What are the different characters? Like these are the two main characters, how user can access uh, internet and all that stuff. So let's let's explain. So as you can see, as, you, as the name suggests, Radius is remote, remote authentication, remote authentication of the device. So for example, this is my user. So user wants to access, this is a user, user wants to access internet. And that's the access point or you can call it, for example, this is access point, let's say this is your router. So that router is basically known as radius client. So this is my radius client. And that's my radius server, which has a database of users and it perform authentication and accounting and all that stuff. So let's say user wants to access internet. So what user will do? User will Firstly, forward his user ID, username, and the password to authentication uh, to the Radius client, which is basically router. Router will forward this credential to authentication server remotely, which is uh, uh, remote uh, located remotely, like Radius server. So Radius server will receive this username and password. Now Radius server will check that the username and password in database if a match occurs then Radius server will issue authorization, like the request uh, is granted. 
like you can say authentication verified authentication verified okay and this authentication instruction will get back to router and then router will give response of authentication and start i mean will give access to the to the user so now user can actually uh, use this router and browse uh, uh, surf over internet and use other uh, websites or whatever you want to do so this particular protocol is called radius protocol in radius protocol authentication uh, is not performed at the client side like at the router side authentication is provided from a radius server which has a database of all the legitimate users also that also after after uh, a th a successful authentication radius also start monitoring the logs as well and put, dumps the log in accounting database whatever user will do it makes a log of the user as well so this protocol is basically called radius protocol so uh, let me just uh, write down few steps that uh, like what we we discussed and how this protocol actually works like in the light of this procedure so the first step is if you can see the first step is the user requests to access rc rc uh, is the radius client like the router and forwards it's username and password okay so user entered his credential and forward the user id and password number two uh, radius client forwards credentials to radius server rs now please remember one thing here password is encrypted but username is again in the plain text form number three radius server looks for a match so when it gets here radius server will look for a match in its database and if a match occurs then authenticates the user okay and forward instructions to the uh, radius client and then also maintain a log so these are the three main steps uh, between in, uh, involved in the radius in the working of the radius in fact okay the second protocol that we use in um, uh, in AAA is the uh, TAC ACS plus which stands for terminal access control access controller access control system plus it is advanced form of uh, tac uh, tac acs acs and of course the advanced form of radius as well uh, but it's basically the patent of cisco it's the pattern of Cisco. It's similar to that. Everything else is exactly the same. But here, if you see, they, it provides two main things. Username plus password. Both goes in encrypted form. Like unlike in the uh, radius where just use uh, the password goes in encrypted form. So both the username plus password, both are encrypted. Number one, that's the main difference. Second difference is it provides client authentication as well client authentication as well client authentication mean uh, the rogue uh, i mean it it doesn't allow a rogue access point it doesn't allow a rogue access point it does not does not allow rogue access point so I, I believe everybody's well familiar with rogue access point. Like for example, if you bring your own device, uh, plug in the ethernet cable, it will not start broadcasting the signal in the case of TAC ACS plus. Why? Because that device needs to be authenticated first because it uses TCP communication. So let me explain to you. Let's say this is your user and that's basically our client. Client means the router or the switch. Let's say this is the router or a client. Okay. Now, this client before the communication start when you put uh, the client here this client needs to be configured with the server 
with the TAC ACS please server. So this client has to be needs to be configured. Once this client will be verified, then it can actually entertain and can forward the request to the server. So uh, and the communication between server and the router is basically TCP. So it established a secure tunnel or not a secure tunnel, but it's basically kind of uh, um, a secure connection is established between the server and the client before the communication start. Rest of the stuff is exactly same user forward username and password it forward username and the password it uh, and the client or the router forward username and password to server server look for in the database if a match occurs then forward the uh, authorization response to uh, authentication response to router and the router forward the response to the user and then user can use router and you know use the internet and all that stuff rest of the stuff is same uh, beside it is username and password both are encrypted uh, other than that, it, it provides the router authentication or the device authentication as well, which is missing in the uh, radius. So if you still use radius, it means it is still vulnerable to rogue access point attack as well. Next is the Kerberos. Kerberos is basically a client server based authentication protocol. And um, that's basically provide authentication plus security and it's extremely or fully encrypted kind of protocol. So Kerberos, what is that? It is a client server based authentication protocol authentication protocol that provides both security and authentication so with Kerberos you're getting both security plus authentication uh, in Kerberos, for example, if a user wants to access a resource, so user cannot directly access the resource, we use a third party in Kerberos for authentication, a fully trusted third party, like a user and uh, and the network resources, both they trust that, uh, that third party. So user cannot access the organizational resources directly so user cannot directly access organization organizational resources but it involves involves a trusted third party that authenticates the user authenticates the user and issue them tickets and then they can show the ticket to the uh, to authentication server or maybe sorry the application server or maybe uh, file server organization resources and they can access the resources uh, in the Kerberos there are mainly three characters the first character is of course the client and the client is basically in that case uh, in the Kerberos client is basically user unlike TAC ACS plus or radius we use um, client is basically a user who wants to access organizational resources number two is the key distribution center KDC key distribution center and key distribution center is basically a trusted party which knows passwords of all legitimate users okay uh, number three is the uh, organizational resources organizational resources so organizational resources could be for example it could be your application server it could be your uh, file server it could be a network server etc etc so these are these are the three main characters that we use in Kerberos. So let's understand what is a Kerberos, how exactly it works. So as I mentioned, we have three main characters in Kerberos. One is the client. This is a client. This is over a key distribution center, KDC. 
key distribution center and that's the organizational resource for example file server now client wants to access this file server as i mentioned earlier client cannot directly access or di cannot directly start authentication with uh, engage the file server or engage the organization resource so we have this trusted third party which will allow them to to communicate and all now as i mentioned earlier this key distribution center knows the password of all clients okay and it has all the authentication server and all so within the key distribution center we have authentication server and we have ticket granting center okay tgc now first step first step what will be the first step in the first step client will uh, client let's say client wants to access file server so client have a request client have a request and that request is file server client will encrypt his request with his password so client has encrypted request through the password so only who knows the password of the client they can they can decrypt and they can see what is the request what client want to access so client will first step is client will send a request which is encrypted by using client's password so who knows the client's, pa client's password client knows his password and key distribution center also knows the client's password because it's a leg legitimate client what key distribution center will do key distribution center since they already know the password of client so they got the request now they know client wants to access the file server and since the password matches uh, they, they they detach it they have dis uh, decrypted that so they you can say tentatively they have authenticated the user they got it because uh, only the person who knows the password they can encrypt that way now what client uh, the key distribution center will do key distribution center will now send a create a tgt tgt is basically ticket granting ticket to uh, which is all again encrypted so now this key distribution center will create uh, and especially authentication server will create tgt T, uh, it's a ticket granting ticket intermediary ticket in fact ticket granting ticket so and uh, this ticket granting ticket is encrypted with a secret key okay so now authentication server in kdc will forward that's the second step first step it has forward they have decrypted that they created that i will list all these steps so now KDC will forward ticket granting ticket encrypted with a key, a secret key, which of course uh, client doesn't know that key. Of course, client doesn't know what, what that particular key is. But after issuing that, authentication server will forward that secret key to ticket granting ticket. Okay, uh, uh, sorry, ticket granting center. Now, once client will receive that, client will forward this TGT with plus the request plus the request which is again encrypted with the password okay to uh, towards the kdc when kdc and specially ticket granting so because request is fine request is already decoded they know that request ticket granting ticket uh, uh, with the encrypted key when it it gets to ticket granting center so they can actually unwrap the ticket granting ticket now they have verified the user because they can also forward that but they have verified this is the right user who has forwarded that particular ticket so user got authenticated once user got authenticated they will the ticket granting center will send the user a ticket or you can say a token and that token is again encrypted with another key k2 which is again unknown to user after issuing that token encrypted token to a user or a client ticket granting center or kdc will forward that particular key k2 to file server now user will forward that token the encrypted token with k2 to file server when it gets to the file server file server already got that particular key so they can unwrap the token once they can unwrap the token it means like the user got authenticated because it this token is with the right user no user can access this file server this overall protocol is called uh, the kerberos let me quickly give you overview what exactly happened user all user wants to access this file server user all had the uh, the password kdc they know all the legitimate user password so user forward a request 
to access the file server encrypted with his password. Forward that request to KDC. KDC decrypt the request because they know the password. They have decrypted the request and then they created TGT, ticket granting ticket, intermediary ticket. Encrypt the ticket with a secret key and, and forward that secret key to ticket granting center. And now forward that encrypted TGT to user. User forward this encrypted TGT along with the request to TGC, ticket granting center. When it got to ticket granting center, since they already got that key, so they decrypted that TGT. So they have fully authenticated this user. Like they got it like this because this ticket should be with the legitimate user. After user got authenticated, so they have forwarded a token which is also encrypted with K2. So you can see this is all 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 the communication is encrypted. They forward the token, the access token to client with encrypted key, and ticket granting sender forward that key to that particular service, like the request, like file server for example, which user wants to access. User will forward that token, encrypted token, to file server so user can access that. Like user is basically showing, hey, I got a token. So file server will decrypt the token and, and see, okay, so you got the right token and then they will allow the user to access the file server or whatever user wants to access. So let me quickly write down the steps which we have discussed here. The first step is client requests authentication server in KDC. AS is authentication server. And what is that authentication uh, request is? Request authentication server. Uh, and uh, that request, that request comprises of client ID and info of specific resource to access. resource to access okay this request is fully encrypted with clients password now the second is uh, upon receiving Client request like this when KDC will when KDC will receive this request upon receiving client's request the authentication server retrieves password of the client. from database and decrypts the request okay now it's the first authentication you can see there are double authentication that we are doing so after successful authentication of client the authentication server this thing the AS now it will create TGT AS sends TGT ticket granting ticket to client which is encrypted with a secret key known to ticket granting center TGC okay that key is only known to that number four step is on receiving of TGT the client forwards encrypted TGT plus request like what do you want to access request to TGC okay so TGC like this the TGC will receive that request number five 
So after receiving this TGT, encrypted TGT from client, the TGC ticket granting center, it will decrypt, decrypts the TGT, okay, uh, because it knows the key, it knows that particular key, it knows that particular key. So decrypts the TGT and sends a token, encrypted token again to client. Okay. Um, and that particular token, again, this is an encrypted token, encrypted token, and that particular key is known to file server and forwards the decryption key of token key of token to file server or whatever the request resources okay whatever the re it could be any resource as well number six client the last step is client sends token to file server this step we are right here file server and file server upon receiving file server upon receiving the file server decrypts the token and allows client to access the resource so this token is just like your this particular token is just like your movie token which can be used on a specific day and specific time because that token will expire after a certain amount of time so this process or this protocol is called Kerberos protocol okay if anybody will have any question you can always email me now let's move to our uh, last agenda item and the last protocol that is called OAuth. First of all, what is OAuth? Um, you might have seen like, for example, let's say um, you have a Facebook account and you want to create an Instagram account. You might have seen, let's say if you want to create Instagram account, you might have seen there's an option login with Facebook. What is that? If you just hit login with Facebook, if you hit that, it redirects you to Facebook page. The Facebook login page where you have to put your Facebook username and password. Once you enter that, then it asks you, do you allow Instagram to post on your behalf or to allow to uh, to access your public information? If you hit allow, then Facebook Instagram can I mean, uh, can post on your behalf on Facebook and they can get the, uh, the public information from Facebook without knowing your username and password. So what is the magic? The magic is OAuth, which is running behind it. So first of all, what is OAuth? And then we'll, I'll explain you with example. So what is first of all OAuth? OAuth is basically OAuth 2.0 is an open standard, open standard protocol that allows a user to grant access of his resources to a third party website or application without sharing credentials. So like user is not basically telling them their Facebook password or other password and they can actually allow them to to use their specific resources for example now again let's say uh alice for example this is our client alice alice she already has a facebook account and she wants to she other she already has a facebook account and she wants to create an instagram account so what will happen how she uh, and, uh, and let's say if she wants to create instagram account by using her her facebook information and allow instagram to post uh something on the facebook on her behalf what is basically going on in the back end? Of course, the answer is OAuth. But what exactly, what's the process? 
So the process is very simple. So let's say Alice wants to create Instagram account using Facebook account. There are two main tokens that basically uh, that Alice she will use. One is called access token. Second is called, uh, sorry, for the first is called request token. Second is called access token. So please remember the one token that will be used is request token. Second is called uh, access token. If anybody gets your access token, they can actually do whatever you can do, whatever you supposed to do on that application. So access token is the most critical type of token. That's basically what, uh, what can allow anybody to access your Hotmail account, Facebook account, uh, without knowing your username and password. Access token is the main token. So how uh, Instagram can get your access token? So firstly, let's say user will request. That's the first step user requests to create account with FB like using your Facebook information like login with that Facebook account. So what will happen? Instagram will ask request the user. So secondly, Instagram will respond to you like I would like to redirect I would like to request to access Facebook account. Can I access your Facebook account or can I uh, redirect you to Facebook account? Then what will happen if user responds with OK? OK, that's fine. You can do that. So what will happen? Instagram will on back end Instagram. This is the four, uh, third step, fourth step. Instagram will go back to uh, Facebook four step and ask for ask Facebook for request token so it will say i need a request token okay that's a request token for this particular user because they ask your username now facebook will issue them a token fifth facebook again no authentication till so facebook will issues our token our token mean request token i'm just making it simple our token now Instagram has got a R token, no, but Instagram cannot access your account still. Now Instagram will forward this request to you. Number four, Instagram will forward you this R token, forward your token to get, get it authorized. Authorized from Facebook. So they have forwarded you a token and say, hey, can you please get it authorized from Facebook because I got this token. Now you will say, okay, not a problem. So this is, sorry, six step, six, three, four, five, and six. Now Alice or whatever the user is, user will forward that token to Facebook. Like user forward the token, our token to authorize. Like please authorize this token. Facebook will say, hey, can you please enter your username and password? Once user enter username and password, like here, user will enter username and password. So after successful authentication, this is seven step. Eight step is Facebook will issue you a authorized R token, request token. So now you got a authorized R token, like Alice got it. Now Alice, she will forward this R token, nine step, authorized R token, to Instagram. Now Instagram got your authorized R token like signed by Facebook, 100% verify. Now Instagram will forward that token to Facebook. Like this is the 10th request. Instagram will forward authorized R token and ask for access token the last the, the main token when facebook will see hey she uh, uh, instagram they got this authorized art uh, request token they got it authorized from the user everything is fine then they will the last step is they will you issue you or they will grant instagram that's the 11th instagram access token once they got the access token, then they can access uh, whatever you're supposed to access. 
So this protocol is called the OAuth OAuth protocol. And by using OAuth protocol, we can actually uh, uh, like Instagram, they don't know your username and password, but they can post on your behalf on Facebook. Uh, you have Instagram account with Facebook uh, username maybe, or you can change your, your own username as well, but you can use Instagram by using your Facebook information. And again, um, uh, every, all the data got synced. So this is OAuth protocol. If anybody has any question, any issues, please do let me know. Thank you.